20-year-old Passion Jeffrey was found dead Thursday after police say she was stabbed more than 100 times. At the time, her two-year-old son, Taylon Mosley, was reported missing, prompting an Amber Alert. Uh, right now, we're here off of 4th Street North in St. Pete, where the search continues for a two-year-old boy who's still missing, Taylon Mosley. Uh, we got the Amber Alert issued late uh, Thursday afternoon, and right now we're entering day two of the search for him. The phone went to voicemail, and nobody answered, and... Um, just kept going to voicemail and my gut told me something was wrong. March 30th, 2023, Theo's repeated calls to her niece, Passion, kept going to voicemail. With each call, Theo grew more worried because it wasn't like Passion to not answer her calls. Early afternoon would come and still no answer. So Theo decided she would go to Passion's apartment during her lunch break. When Theo arrived, she would approach the locked door with caution. Sensing something was amiss, she knocked and there was no answer. Pressing her ear against the door, Theo strained to listen, hoping to catch even the faintest sound. But there was nothing, just silence. Theo knew what it was like to have her lively and curious two-year-old nephew Taylin around. She had expected to hear the usual sounds of life, footsteps, laughter, and even voices from the television. Instead, an eerie void enveloped the other side of the door, and the silence would only serve to intensify Theo's worry. When Theo happened to look down toward the floor, she was shocked by what she saw. There on the floor was a trail of blood that stretched from the door of the apartment out to the sidewalk just outside the apartment building. Upon noticing, Theo's instinct for action kicked in. She wasted no time. She hailed a maintenance man and reached for her phone to dial the number of the property manager at the Lincoln Shores Apartments, requesting that they open the door for a wellness check. Upon opening the door, Theo and the manager would make a gruesome discovery inside the apartment. Passion, a 20-year-old mother who was once vibrant, full of life, and who was determined to give her son the best life possible, was found dead on the bathroom floor in a pool of of blood with more than 100 sharp force wounds. When Theo collected herself from the initial shock of seeing Passion this way, she suddenly realized that Talon, Passion's son, who lived at the apartment with his mother, was nowhere in sight. We're going to get into it, but first be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on updates to this story, trending topics, and so much more. Now let's get into it. March 29th, 2023. Passion and Talon were last seen when members of their family would gather at Passion's apartment to celebrate a special milestone, the 21st birthday celebration of Thomas Mosley, who is Talon's father. Around 5 p.m., the party was winding down and family members began to leave. As the clock neared 5.20 p.m., the buzz of conversation gradually faded away. Family and friends bid their goodbyes, leaving Passion, Talon, and Thomas in the apartment alone. As the afternoon turned into evening, the traffic in and out of the apartment had settled. However, at around 8.30 p.m., several neighbors would later report hearing a commotion coming from Passion's apartment. Despite the noise prompting neighbors to pause, no immediate calls were made to the police. About 15 minutes after the commotion was heard, it was reported that Thomas left the apartment, taking Passion's cell phone with him. From there, he drove about 13 miles across town to the Dell Holmes Park community, where he would linger for a short time. At around 9 p.m., Thomas would arrive at his mother's home with visible cuts on his arms and hands. The sight of his injuries raised immediate concern among his family, who quickly realized that something deeply troubling had transpired. Concerned by the severity of Thomas's injuries, his mother insisted that he seek medical attention immediately. So Thomas would later admit himself to St. Anthony's Hospital. Thomas's injuries, which were initially deemed serious, required immediate intervention. As the medical team attended to his wounds, their experienced eyes noticed something was unsettling. The nature of Thomas's injuries bore a chilling resemblance to wounds that they encountered before. Injuries consistent with those caused by a knife attack. Much like when someone shows up to the hospital with a gunshot wound, doctors are also required to summon the police upon observing the types of injuries that Thomas had as well. 
So the authorities were promptly called to the hospital. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, the police arrived to question Thomas, hoping to gather valuable information that could shed light on the events that had unfolded. But Thomas refused to speak with law enforcement at that time. However, law enforcement officials did confirm that Thomas had gotten himself admitted to the hospital and had suffered several cuts to his arms and hands. March 30th, 2023. When the regularly scheduled FaceTime call with Passion failed to materialize, Theo's concern spiked. Driven by her deep-rooted intuition, around 2.30 p.m., Theo would make her way to Passion's apartment where she would discover not only a very violent homicide scene where Passion lost her life, but she would also discover that Talon, her two-year-old great-nephew who lived there with his mother, was also missing. When the police arrived, Theo would report that her two-year-old nephew, Talon, was missing. This report sent shockwaves through the community, intensifying the urgency to locate Talon, who was nowhere to be found. The devastating reality of the situation spurred a concerted and tireless effort to bring him home safely. And locally, an Amber Alert has been issued for this missing two-year-old boy you see on the right side of your screen here. It happened at the Lincoln Shores Apartments on 4th Street North, where detectives found 20-year-old Pashoon Jeffrey dead. Police tell us her two-year-old son, Taylin Mosley, is missing right now. Again, you see him right here. Police believe he could be in danger. The FDLE says he's been kidnapped. They are searching for him right now. This is the area where that search began, the Lincoln Shores Apartments on 4th Street North in St. Pete, just north of Gandhi. That's where they found Talon's mother, Passion Jeffrey, dead inside of her apartment. Officers tell us neighbors heard something Wednesday night, but it's still not clear what happened to her. Crews spent today scouring the area and nearby bodies of water in hopes of finding anything that could help find Talon. Talon's disappearance sparked an immediate and urgent response from law enforcement agencies and the community at large. They took swift action, leading to Amber Alerts being issued throughout the area that evening around 5.42 p.m. The distinct sound of emergency alerts blared from cell phones, televisions, and radios disseminating crucial information and enlisting the public's help in the search for baby Talon. The search team would use canines, drones, and a dive team was also called in to help. An urgent search around the clock as authorities search for a two-year-old who vanished from an apartment in St. Pete, Florida. We are asking still share to help the boy's mother found dead at the scene of what police are calling a violent murder. New details this morning on the nonstop search for Taylin Mosley. March 31st, 2023. On the morning of March 31st, the police would send out another call for information and give an update on their search. Officers were still canvassing Passion's apartment complex, and St. Petersburg Fire and Rescue had a dive team scouring nearby ponds. A few hours later, police would announce a $5,000 reward for information on the homicide and missing baby Talon. We need to find this two-year-old. We need to know where he is. So please, if you get that information out there, please. If anybody knows where this young man is, please, we're begging you, please call us. So that's our concern right now. We need to find this young man to make sure he's okay. I shouldn't say young man, make sure this child is okay. Later that afternoon, police would call for volunteers to help with the search. And there's Amber Alerts everywhere. everywhere. And you guys have seen them. I have people all over the country calling me about the Amber Alerts. So I'm asking everybody, if anybody, somebody saw something, okay? Please speak up. So if you know something, say something. Help us get Taylor back. Taylor lost his mommy, so he needs his family right now. So we ask for your help um, in finding him. Somebody knows. Somebody Please knows something. Please, please speak up. Somebody knows something, somebody saw something. At 9.33 p.m., police would call off the volunteer search. As a local fisherman had spotted an alligator submerging back into Lake Megory with something rather large in its mouth. When officers who were already on the scene got closer, they could make out that it was the body of a boy. One of them shot the alligator and the animal immediately released the boy and the officers were able to recover Talon's body intact. First tonight, a tragic update in the case of a missing two-year-old, Talon Mosley. 
Just four hours ago, investigators found his body in the jaws of an alligator at Dell Holmes Park in South St. Petersburg. That's 13 miles away from the apartment where his mother, Passion Jeffrey, was found murdered inside her unit yesterday. This is with great sadness I have to inform you here today that Taylor's body has been found. It is my condolences going out to the family and to his loved ones. We are sorry that it had to end this way. Through investigative technique, we were able to find an area around Dell Holmes Park that led the investigators to that area. The, the detectives had been there all afternoon, and while they were there, they were spotted an alligator with an object in, in his mouth. As the, as the detectives got closer, they fired one round uh, to the alligator. The alligator dropped the object that he had in his mouth and we were able to retrieve Talon's body intact. 24 days later, on April 24, the Pinellas County Medical Examiner announced that an autopsy had revealed that Talon's cause of death was drowning. As the police combed through the crime scene at the apartment, some of the smallest details would become potential clues that would unlock the mysteries surrounding Passion's tragic death as well. Amidst the many details were two significant discoveries. Their attention would immediately be drawn to a bloody footprint imprinted on the bathroom floor. Within its pattern, a distinctive Gucci emblem stood out. Then, as they continued their search, officers would uncover an intentionally concealed cleaning bottle secretly stowed away beneath a bed. On it was a fingerprint stained with blood. Their analysis would later reveal that the fingerprint belonged to Thomas Mosley. Based on the timeline and the evidence, the police started to piece together a devastating sequence of events. Three hours after the celebration, consumed by a fit of rage, Thomas Mosley allegedly unleashed a vicious attack upon Passion, repeatedly stabbing her to the point that the sheer number of wounds, over 100, would highlight the level of aggression Thomas had for Passion. Then leaving Passion Bravely injured and fighting for her life, Thomas took Talon, his innocent two-year-old son, and embarked on a journey of unspeakable horror. Driving approximately 13 miles away, he arrived at the Dell Holmes Park community, where he would do the unthinkable. Thomas allegedly discarded his own son, a beautiful innocent child, into the depths of the lake. Talon, powerless and vulnerable, met a tragic fate as he drowned, forever robbed of the life he deserved. For this unspeakable act of cruelty, 21-year-old Thomas has been charged with two counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of 20-year-old Passion Jeffrey and their son, Talon Mosley. Thomas Mosley is currently in the Pinellas County Jail awaiting trial. Our sincerest condolences to the family. We stand in solidarity with you, seeking justice for Passion and Talon. What do you think about this case? Are you following it? What do you think caused Thomas to commit such a heinous crime? Do you think he suffered a mental break or is he just plain evil? I would love to know your thoughts. As always, let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Justice for Passion and Talon.